Hey folks, how's it going today? So today I am working on a playthrough of my Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier Tremo Verb, which in my opinion is the best damn rectifier that they ever made. I've had a few of them, I've played a bunch of them in stores. I think this is just the darkest, the thickest, the best sounding uh, of all the different models and you know, a few other guys agree. So <clears throat> I've got one and I'm going to check it out. I'm going to try to do this thing justice. There are so many modes on this thing that you know, I'm going to do my best to go through everything and, and uh, show you guys some different tones. Um, obviously it's the trim of verb, so it has the tremolo, which uh, <clears throat> today I'm going to be playing my KH2. And to be honest, the tremolo sounds really good through guitars that have passive pickups. Not as good through active, but that's what I got today. So if I ever pick up a guitar with passives, I might try it again. Um, it's got different channels over here. You got your clean, your vintage high gain, your blues, and your modern high gain. Um, <clears throat> fairly similar to other rectos, except for that blues channel. Uh, on the back here, it has lots of tubes, lots and lots. Uh, when you see me stick my hand behind here, we're going to be starting out on vacuum tube. First time I stick my hand back behind, I'm gonna flip it to silicone diode, which is gonna tighten it up a little bit. The vacuum tube's a little saggier. Second time I switch my hand behind here, we're gonna be starting on spongy, and I'll stick my hand back here and kick it over to bold. Spongy drops the plate voltage, so it just kind of makes the attack a little softer. Bold, you know, sharpens it up. So for, you know, your blues and stuff like that, the silicone diode and the spongy sounds really good. Uh, you know, for your uh, high gain stuff, the silicone diode and the bold sounds really good. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to really be getting into the loop today. You can actually affect the, the tone a little bit by manipulating a, just a pass through on the loop, but it's such a slight difference on the recording that I'm not going to bother. <clears throat> and then over here, there's also a channel where you can kind of flip flop a couple of your modes so that uh, you can dial in what you want your two channels to be. And while that does change tone as well, uh, you know, that's some, once again, you know, some real fine-tuning stuff, and I'm not going to mess with that today just because there's just so much to cover as it is. So, let me see if I can play a couple things down here on my looper where I can run some stuff through the, uh, <clears throat> the loop on the input, turn some dials, and see what kind of tones we can come up with. All right, guys. Thanks. <laughs> channel on this thing. It's just so rich and buttery. Uh, anyway, a couple things that I also wanted to talk about here uh, with the knobs. <clears throat> Typically on a recto, 
you want to just start with everything at noon and then just make little tweaks for the room. Um, you know, it's not like a Mark series amp where you're tweaking it to death and, you know, the settings are non-intuitive. With a Recto, that's pretty, pretty straightforward. You know, just little tweaks here and there for the sound. So what I'm doing in this video is I'm starting with everything at noon and you'll see me turn the knob all the way down, turn it all the way up, and then put it back in noon when I'm done. <clears throat> also, a recording down here on this uh, Recto 112 cabinet with a Vintage 30 in it through an SM58 into this little iRig Pre and into my phone. <clears throat> and uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, for the clean channel, obviously I'm just going straight in, well, going straight in with all these, but for the boosted channel uh, lead channels, Rectos just don't work without a boost. If you don't have a boost in front of these on the gain channels, you're not getting the full experience. So since there's so much to cover on this amp, uh, for all the distortion channels, um, <clears throat> I've got a 20 decibel boost right on the guitar, and so I'm just gonna boost it right in, because uh, it, it really, really tightens up the sound on these things, and honestly, it's not even really worth running these without a boost in the front, in my opinion. So. Just wanted to let you know what that sound is going to be coming from for the next few channels.
So that's that. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I love this piece of gear. Uh, this head, definitely a keeper. Uh, you know, even on these active pickups, you know, the clean channel is just so sweet on this thing. Um, you know, I thought I got a pretty good representation also on the vintage high gain and on the modern high gain. I have to admit, you know, I feel like I struggled a little bit on the blues channel because I think the active pickups really don't work that well on the blues channel for this guy. Uh, you know, I've played uh, a strap through here and it just sounds amazing kind of the same deal with the tremolo it just it sounds a lot better with those passive pickups uh, but anyway um, overall this is what you can do with one of these and you know I think it's an extremely versatile head uh, it can really cover a ton of ground um, and I 
I think it's amazing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time. Bye.